Hello and welcome to the next episode of the Explain series with your host, Dr. Brett Palmer. In the Explain series, we take a sexual health topic and explain it. And this week it's the turn of uh, Papillon du Mot. That's the French for butterflies of love, otherwise known as pubic lice. Now, pubic lice are quite a, an unpleasant little insect and uh, you can't get infected with pubic lice. Uh, what you do is you get, uh, you get an infest, infestation of uh, pubic lice. And so they're not very nice. So pubic lice tend to be uh, small, squat, and have uh, claws at the, right at the front. Uh, and they actually look like miniature crabs. Uh, so the slang name for uh, pubic lice is actually crabs. And now they do have cousins as well. So you may have heard of head lice. You may have also heard of body lice. And you may have also heard of clothes uh, lice. Um, now, in our modern world, clothes lice are actually uh, very rare now because we change our clothes on, sometimes on a daily basis. Uh, and so the chances of uh, clothes lice um, sticking around long enough to actually thrive and live are few and far between. Um, however, uh, if uh, you go to an area where there's extreme poverty, uh, where people don't have the luxury of changing their clothes, um, or in war zones, <coughs> then clothes lice uh, are also a lot more common. Uh, head lice, well, uh, otherwise known as nits, uh, are a little bit more common. Uh, and body lice, well, I must admit, I haven't seen any body lice uh, since I've been in sexual health, uh, but I have seen uh, quite a few uh, crab lice or pubic lice. So, um, does it mean you're, if you're dirty or anything else like that? No, it doesn't, not at all. Um, pubic lice uh, are no indication of whether you're too clean, too dirty. Um, uh, it's just, unfortunately, you've uh, had close body contact uh, with someone who has uh, pubic lice. And you also may not know that you have pubic lice as well, because everyone thinks, well, if you've got pubic lice, surely you're itching all the time. That's not actually true, because what happens is um, the louse, um, well, uh, the louse feeds uh, off your body. Okay, what it does, it makes a little nick in the skin. Uh, you have a little pool of blood, and it slurps up the blood through a central straw uh, uh, as part of its mouth. And what it does, it also excretes a little anaesthetic as well, and so as it's grabbing hold of your hair, it doesn't cause too much irritation. Some people do get a bit itchy, but a lot of people don't have any symptoms at all. Um, and then what happens is the pubic lice, um, as it's moving around, and they can be relatively uh, quick uh, moving, um, they uh, obviously lay eggs. Uh, those, leg, those eggs um, hatch. Um, in about a week or so, uh, and it's called uh, baby lice, uh, and uh, they obviously grow and become uh, full adults in uh, one or two weeks, uh, in which then they can start uh, laying eggs again. Uh, so you don't actually have to have sex to have um, pubic louse. You could um, go to a, a bed and breakfast uh, where the sheets haven't been uh, changed, um, and the person before you had um, a crab uh, or any kind of uh, lice would do it, but if they've got crab lice, and then you can pick them up as you go into uh, into that bed as well. So I don't make you paranoid. Um, it's also worth it mentioning right now is uh, due to deforestation of their natural habitat, in other words, people shaving within an inch of their life, um, the pubic louse is becoming uh, a lot more of a rarer event. As some people say even uh, becoming uh, extinct. But there's enough people with um, uh, a big bush down below uh, to make sure that the pubic lice uh, don't completely die out uh, for those of you who are interested in keeping the ecology of pubic lice alive. So that's basically what it is. Uh, a lot of people can actually diagnose it themselves. Uh, if you're lucky enough you might be able to, or unlucky enough, you might be able to pluck a pubic lice out of your pubic hair and look under it at the microscope. If it looks like um, a, a flat crab then hey bingo! Um, Sometimes though you don't actually see uh, the pubic uh, lice themselves. What you might see is a little brown speckly dust stuff, uh, which is their, um, their poo uh, in your uh, underwear. Uh, what you can also see is on the pubic hair as well. If you see little tiny bumps on the pubic hair, uh, that could actually be the eggs. If you're not sure and you don't know, don't shave it all off and then, uh, and then go to a gum clinic. Come to the gum clinic with everything as it were in situ and we will have a look. Um, we will uh, take a few samples and we can have a look at it under the microscope 
um, to see it uh, possibly even moving around. Um, <clears throat> and uh, and it's fine to feel a little bit itchy, um, but you don't have to. Uh, when in terms of the treatment, the treatment is really really simple, uh, and it's uh, effectively a, an insecticide. And you put it on, and it depends on the make of insecticide you get. And you can pick it up from your pharmacist as well, uh, or you can pick it up uh, depending on what they do at your local sexual health clinic. Some sexual health clinics give it out. Some sexual health clinics say go to your local pharmacy and buy. Uh, and they'll give you a make of what they commonly advise. And you apply that shampoo, and it, depending on the shampoo will depend on how long you have to leave it on your body for. Uh, sometimes some people will leave it on for uh, 15, half, a, um, half an hour, some much, much longer. Um, but after you've been treated, you also need to wash all your clothes and bed linen uh, in a 50 degree plus wash, so hotter than 50 degrees. That will kill um, uh, the lice and then you also have to repeat that body wash again in uh, five to seven days time <clears throat> that way because the uh, insecticide you're using won't kill off uh, the eggs it will only kill off uh, uh, the actual uh, insects moving around and then if you repeat it uh, in five to seven days time then you will catch the hatchlings as it were uh, also, if you're sharing a bed uh, with a, a partner, uh, they have to be treated at the same time and uh, no sex until you've completed uh, both treatments. Uh, and that's very important, otherwise you'll just pass on um, uh, the pubic lice. And if you're thinking to yourself, well, I don't have any pubic hair, so therefore I can't have pubic lice. Well, um, pubic lice actually like coarse hair, so you can find them on the abdomen, on the chest, uh, for the, um, so this is more probably to do with the men, uh, uh, beards as well, and also in the eyebrows and eyelashes, more likely um, the eyelashes than the eyebrows. I've seen them in the eyelashes because the eyelashes are a thicker hair, which is more similar to uh, the thickness of pubic hair. The treatment is effectively the same. Where the treatment differs, and this is very important, is if you could be a pregnant uh, individual. And so if you're pregnant, you have, to, you have to definitely tell uh, the doctor um, because this is, or if you're breastfeeding, um, because uh, uh, these are insecticides we're talking about and they could be harmful for the unborn child and also harmful for a breastfeeding child. But there are certain medications you can take, uh, you can apply, but you just have to make sure you wash, off, wash it off the breast before you do um, a feed. Uh, so... Um, Always go for a sexual health che checkup as well, um, uh, because of the if you've had sex with someone and you've caught uh, pubic lice, uh, there is a, there's a saying in sexual health that sexual health infections always travel in pairs, and so it's good to get a, a screen done just to make sure uh, you haven't been exposed to anything else. So if you want further information, the Family Planning Association do a fantastic leaflet on uh, pubic lice. There's also a, if you're interested in lice in general, uh, whether be it, be it nits or body uh, lice, um, then BBC Radio 4 Natural Histories do a half hour programme uh, on, the on the louse. And uh, you can also pick up more information uh, from NHS Choices, British um, Association of Sexual Health, uh, also the CDC uh, over in America. Um, but look after your sexual health. If you have any problems, go to uh, a sexual health doctor or your family doctor, get it checked out. And uh, I hope you have one, a great uh, sexual health. If you like this video, please subscribe and uh, share. Thank you very much for watching. Take care.